a band. Seaside, Seaside band. is a caring, connected, and expanding spiritual community, sharing practical tools for richer living. Just your heart to show you how you can be the change if you want to. We join in partnership with God to influence our lives for good, whether for improved health, finances, relationships, or simple happiness and joy. Plant a flower, watch it grow. You will reap what you sow. You gotta be the change. Be the change you wanna see. Good morning, Seaside. Happy Easter, everybody. joyful this morning. Are we joyful today? Come on. Let's welcome in our very own Seaside Choir and our practitioners, Reverend Dr. Christian. Come on. presence in the light of this day that is birthing and growing and emerging in this moment. For truly it is a divine moment and where that presence touches down and touches each of us in that personal way, cracking that shell that has got us entombed. And what emerges here is that greater expression of being for everything changes with Easter, with that realization, that rising consciousness. For today is blessed, that spirit is moving in the house and is moving through every one of us knowing that together we have created this magnificent unfoldment of the divine presence. And so we go forth in joy, in love, in excitement, rising to that level of the divine, knowing that truly that is our natural state of being. So with joy, we enter into this light and love together and experience that presence. And so it is. Joyful, joyful. Everybody, happy Easter! Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get you guys ready to sing together? Yeah. Well, all right. My name's Carl Anthony, and let's do some singing. All right. So this is Group A, right there. Say A. Hey. All right. This is Group B. Say mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is Group C. C. That's right. All right. So right up there is our song. There it is. It's I am as God created me. Group A. You're gonna go like this. I am as God created me. In the light, in the love, in the glory. Together. I am as God created me. In the light, in the love, in the glory. 
you guys give them a big round of applause? They were so good. You sounded good as that choir. Okay, B section, are you ready? Yeah. All right, goes like this. The second line. In the light, in the love, in the glory of God I am. Together. In the light, in the love, in the glory of God I am. Give them a big round of applause, they're good. All right, C section, you ready? Okay. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. I am. Go ahead. Okay, are, are you ready? Okay, here we go. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. I am. Give him a hand. All right, everybody, stand up. You saw the choir, now you're the choir, okay? All right, but so we have Christian leading this part over here. Oh, no, no. Oh, he gets Rebecca. That's no fair, Christian. <laughs> All right. All right, and I'll help the, I'll help the middle group and, and the choir. You, you just focus on everybody, okay? All right. All right, band, you ready? Okay, I'm going to go like this. Hey.
happy Easter. Let's take a moment to thank Carl Anthony once again. Thank you, Carl. I, I, I love that song, and I sing it to my grandchildren when they are fussing. Nice. <laughs> and it works really well. It calms them right down. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy spring, happy Passover, happy Easter. It's delightful to have you here. I'm Reverend Kathy Hearn. I'm one of the staff ministers here at Seaside, and I'm, I'm also the dean of the School of Spiritual Leadership, which are, is our ministerial training program here. Right. Woo! <laughs> it's hard to talk after singing. Oh, I'm catching my breath. <laughs> at the core of this celebration of Easter Sunday, there is a story. And it's a story that is about 2018 years old. It's a story of an itinerant teacher who wandered his homeland teaching the people in the language and the images and the metaphors of their daily life. He upset the authorities and he did many miracles of healing until he became the miracle himself. And so I want to share with you the story as it's reflected in the Gospel of Luke, which tells the tale of what took place after his death. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. And later in the evening, when Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, he said to them, Peace be unto you. And now here's our wonderful choir.
Wow, thank you, Sasha and Choir. What beautiful harmonies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Christina Tillotson, and I'm one of the ministers here at Seaside, and I'm also the Dean of Online Education for Centers for Spiritual Living and for the Holmes Institute, which is part of our ministerial education. And so I want to spend a, send a special shout out to all of you who are connecting all over the world online, and especially to the online practitioner students who are Facebooking live with our dear cat, and they will be graduating here in June. So you will all get to meet them then. So I get to lead the responsive reading, and words are really, really, powerful and when we say words together they go ringing out into the universe allowing the universe to align to allow those words to come into being so everything it says leader that's me everything it says congregation that's you so life is perfect complete and whole yesterday day today and for for eternity I am not bound by the past. I am new in every moment, living the divine as me now. The old has passed away, and the new old, I make all things new. Life is not stuck, static, or stale. The All destructive thoughts of despair, discouragement, insufficiency can find no refuge in my consciousness. The light of God radiates from me. Wisdom speaks through me. Truth supports me as I into my Conditions have no power over me. Anything I might have feared is powerless over me. I roll away the stone from my tomb of smallness. This is a new day. There is no place where God is not. My soul is I do not need to die to become immortal. I am immortal now. Today I celebrate the wonder of this divine life, living as me. to be of service to you today. I haven't been here for a while, so resurrection's all about evolution and change, and I see we have a beautiful new platform and ladies' room, and I see many new beautiful faces, and so I see that we are going through some evolutionary beautiful changes. Uh, I would like to invite you to close your eyes and to go within to the stillness. We can open space for spirit. <laughs> allowing that space to spirit to flow with divine ease and grace this is the holy week that we celebrate the Christ the Christ consciousness as Jesus the Christ the great example of living in the eternal now so I know right here and right now there's only one life and that life is God and that life is good and that life is beautiful and that life is omnipresent it is everywhere in its fullest always expressing itself 
And I know that I am one with this life of God. I am one with the Christ consciousness. I am an eternal being. I am whole and complete in every single way, always evolving, always changing, always growing, always becoming more of myself, always revealing more of the Christ within my life. And as I know this is my perfect divine truth, I know this is the truth for every individual here. Every beautiful soul is the essence of spirit, unique, individualized in nature, but yet one and complete and undivided within the whole. And how beautiful it is as we come together today in this spiritual community to expand and grow our hearts, our life, our mind, our soul. How beautiful it is that the Dr. Reverend Christian Sorensen just allows the spirit to speak through him, as him, and by him. He flows through the essence of the divine. The words flows through him with divine ease and grace. He speaks to the hearts and the souls of every single person here in this room. For we are evolutionary species. We are peeling back the layers and allowing the flow of Christ to move in through and around our lives. There's only love, love and law. And how grateful I am for the spiritual community and the principles and the practices as we move out into the world and all we see with the eyes of God, all we see with the eyes of love, knowing that everything in our life can be resurrected at any time. And I'm grateful for this perfect truth as I release my word into the law, knowing that it is done, knowing that it is so. And so it is. All right, at this time, we want to introduce Carl Anthony Beck. Come on. Yeah. Good morning. Well, you, you, you sang so pretty before, I had to give you something else to do. I'll just, how about, how about you help me with the chorus, okay? All right, by the way, you look good. Everybody's all dressed up. Very nice. This song here is a, a song that's kind of a... Uh, CSL in one chorus. It goes like this. I am, I am who, I am who I am because of what I put into my mind. That's a little long. <laughs> I tell you what, on that part you go, oh yeah, together. Oh yeah. Because of what I put into my mind. Oh yeah. I can change, I can change. who I am. next to you and say, you sound good. You said you couldn't sing. It must be Easter. I don't know. You sound really good. Should we bring a band in? What do you think? They sound good today, that band, don't they? I think so. One, two, three. Stand tough. 
I know you stand to say I am who I am because of what I put into my mind. Oh yeah, I can change who I am by what I put into. Oh, now you're feeling it. Come on, Bob, let's go. another mother <laughs> figure we figured we have been doing Easter together since 1993 that Yay. is 25 years together <laughs> Woo. man that is a while Carl wow, wow. Rebecca bless you for the wonderful orchestration and calling all your musical buddies on this day that is just fabulous guys in the band in the direction of Bob you choir, we love you, we love you. Under the direction of Sasha, it is fabulous. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Oh, whew. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Okay, so um, I'm thinking uh, um, about the beginning of, you know, the, the, the human, the calendar we're involved with. It kind of started around the common era around Jesus' day. So if that was really true, then probably that was the first April Fool's Day that happened. And so as Dr. Kathy was reading about the women getting to the cave early, um, and there was no body that was there, that was probably the first Easter or the April Fool's prank ever delivered. <laughs> Surprise, I'm not here. <laughs> and really, probably the one of his greatest fool, April Fool's pranks is that, you know what Jesus said? Hey, there really isn't death, guys. I've just been fooling you the whole time. You cannot die. So get over that one. Okay, okay that's good. And the other great prank that was going on is that we believe that we're this body, that, that we're this physical form. Yeah, this is Christian. Not. No, 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 no. That is another one of those great April Fool plan <laughs> pranks. So anyway, um, so as, as I take a look at this, I realize the great Easter story is about these individuals who were willing to take a look at what appeared to be real, the body, what appeared to be real was death. And they said, you know what? That is not the truth. You are bigger than that. The story here is that you are bigger than whatever befalls you, including death. You are greater than what your body is throwing at you. You are greater than the tragedy that you have experienced in your life that has brought you to your knees and seeking something greater than is in this world. 
because I don't care how charmed a life you live, how blessed you are, how talented you may be, whether you can walk on water or heal the sick, life's going to throw a twist and turn to you at some point in your life. And what's imperative is that you know that I am bigger than this. Got any challenges that have shown up in your life? Then I want you to say, I am bigger than this. Together, I am bigger than this. Got that affirmation down? Say it again. I am bigger than this. Now, this isn't uh, like a new thought that I've just brought up for you guys. Actually, it's been around. You know, the whole Easter story is that I am bigger than death. I am greater than this. But what I'd like to do at the beginning of my uh, Easter message is set a foundation that keeps us from being um, unaware of the other stories that are similar but have a different origin. And so every year what I tend to do is I go through some of those Easter stories that predated the Jesus Easter story, the story of those solar messiahs. Because I don't want us to be unaware. I watch people unabashedly just given over their belief to, okay, this is the one and the only story of the begotten son, born to virgin birth, crucified and rising to greater glory. That's not so. And I feel it is important because it does not discredit our Jesus story. What it does is when you find a similar story weaving itself through antiquity, from the beginning of reported time, through different players, through different eras, different epochs, different uh, millennium, through different cultures, it tends to add validity to the spiritual truth of the story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at least that's where I'm coming from this morning, just so you know. <laughs> anyway, instead of me sharing with you all these stories, you know what? I found it on this YouTube clip. Marv, would you run it? is still expressed on many levels to this day. Broadly speaking, the story of Horus is as follows. Horus was born on December 25th of the virgin Isis, Mary. His birth was accompanied by a star in the east, which, in turn, three kings followed to locate and adorn the newborn savior. At the age of 12, he was a prodigal child teacher. and At the age of 30, he was baptized by a figure known as Anup, and thus began his ministry. Horus had 12 disciples he traveled about with, performing miracles such as healing the sick and walking on water. Horus was known by many gestural names such as the Truth, the Light, God's Anointed Son, the Good Shepherd, the Lamb of God, and many others. After being betrayed by Typhon, Horus was crucified, buried for three days, and thus resurrected. These attributes of Horus, whether original or not, seem to permeate many cultures of the world, for many other gods are found to have the same general mythological structure. Attis of Phrygia, born of the virgin Nana on December 25th, crucified, placed in a tomb, and after three days was resurrected. Krishna of India, born of the virgin Devaki, with a star in the east signaling his coming. He performed miracles with his disciples, and upon his death was resurrected. Dionysus of Greece, born of a virgin on December 25th, was a traveling teacher who performed miracles such as turning water into wine. He was referred to as the King of Kings, God's only begotten Son, the Alpha and Omega, and many others. And upon his death, he was resurrected. Mithra of Persia, born of a virgin on December 25th, he had 12 disciples and performed miracles, and upon his death was buried for three days and thus resurrected. He was also referred to as the Truth, the Light, and many others. Interestingly, the sacred day of worship of Mithra was Sunday. The fact of the matter is, there are numerous saviors from different periods okay. from all over the world which subscribe. So what I... I don't want us to be ignorant of the history that is upon this planet and give our power away blindly to thinking this is the only story. For me, it enhances the story of truth that there is a message about, you know, we have got to face the challenges and the difficulties in our life, and we can be crucified, we can be brought to our knees, but you know what? We can be bigger than what this world throws at us, and every one of those stories is about those individuals who refuse to quit, those that refuse to give up, including if they were thrown in the tube, that this isn't the end of my story, that I can be born again. 
You know, there was a star. They talk about that star. It's Cyrus is what they talk about, the star in the east that lines up on the 25th with the three stars in Orion's belt, which are called the three kings. And in the heavens, you've got the 12 zodiacs, which tend to be the, you know, the 12 disciples. You can come up with all the reasonings behind the story, but you know what? There is a meaning that is deep and significant about individuals that have been wiped out and they have not remained down. And you get to decide, am I going to rise above this? This is the story of Easter, that I can rise triumphant in my life no matter what, including death in my world. And so, you know, the key here is that they didn't give up. And the key to making your contribution in your life, it's you. (laughs) That's not really a, a, a big question mark. The key to you making the contribution in your life is you. Imagine if you did not contribute that something, it wouldn't be happening. Imagine if those individuals had quit. We would not be celebrating this day. That is the power and the significance and the importance to continue to keep going, to realize that whatever has been the challenge, I'm going to continue to believe. I'm going to know that there is an answer. I'm not going to give up. I would rather try and fail than not try at all. I would rather go for it than not go for it than have not not gone for it at all. Right? I would rather, you know the cliche, aim for the stars and miss than not have aimed at all. I would rather have loved and lost than not loved at all. <laughs> you know how the story is good when it goes. What is important is that you don't give up on yourself. It's just plain wrong to quit on yourself. Because I'll tell you what, you're, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know your, your greater good isn't just for you. You realize that? Your greater good blesses everybody around you. It automatically pours over and brings insight. It brings gifts. It brings nourishment. It brings renewal. It brings insight. It brings value. It brings blessing. It is just an automatic reciprocation that flows from your overflow into the greater expression. But you are the one who's got to say, hey, I can do it. You know, you remember that time when you knew you could do it? You could do anything? Good, because I've got an assignment for you. I want you to, not now, this is when you go home, but I want you to look into that mirror at home. I want you to look at yourself and call forth that teenager, that teenager before he or she became corrupted, that teenager that believed it could create anything it set its heart upon, that it had a dream and knew that it could fulfill it, that it could go out and rock the world. I want you to call forth that teenager and look in the eyes and say, you know what, how am I doing? Am I, are you pleased with where you are now in life? You know, are you feeling good? Are you feeling proud in the way in which you have turned out in your world? Or, you know, is there something else I can tweak here? Something I can do a little little bit better? And if so, you know, it's yours to do. Nobody's going to do that for you. You know, you have got to be willing to go for that. And if you were to act as if this was your last day upon this planet You know, what would it feel like if you had given 150% to going for that, rising above, rising in consciousness, knowing that this Easter message changes everything? Are you able to feel as if you are satisfied with how you have lived your life and have put it all on the table and left nothing behind? I can't answer that for you. These are questions for you to take home, to sit in deep meditation and say, you know what, if I look back, do I feel like I gave it all? I gave it my all, that I was willing to step out there and go for that in my life. Because as we begin to rise in consciousness, as we begin to move into those greater states of connectivity with the infinite, we begin to live that Easter message and realize that vibration and that frequency begins to change what's going on in our world. You change within and the outer changes. Carl Song, magnificent. You're right, that is a science of mind message all the way. What I put into my mind, what I'm putting into my mind is looking at spirit in and through all things. I'm not going to allow myself to be betrayed or fooled by this world. I I know it's April Fool's, but the whole joke is that we cannot die, that we are greater than anything that is going on in our body or our world of affairs, and the Christ consciousness, which is what this message is about, is rising to that level where there is no separation, that I become the portal through which the infinite passes into form, and that the Christ expression is not a person, and it is not a thing, it is not a a solar messiah who lived 2,000 years ago, it is a state of awareness that we call a consciousness, a Christ consciousness, where there is an absolute merging with the whole that in this vibration nothing but the divine can emerge and express itself in our life in our world
And, you know, uh, with this said, we may stumble sometimes. We're going for it. But I'll tell you, the stumbling and the challenges are only to our ego, not to our destiny. It is only to our little mind that it is caught up in the challenges that are there, forgetting its relationship with spirit. You know, and our relationship with spirit is not like a rotten relationship that we have had in life where, you know, our, our boyfriend or our girlfriend or our significant other says, man, I, I don't know if I can stick around. You're, you know, you're, uh, you're not getting your makeup on soon enough in the morning for me. Or, you know, your hair's going gray or you have a few extra pounds or chins that are just, you know, I, I just don't know if I can stay there. You know, your relationship with God has never changed unless you have changed your relationship with God. Spirit loves you, and the Course of Miracles says that um, God loves you always. You are the beloved child of God. You got that? Spirit loves you always, not only if your hair is right, or you got the right outfit on, or if your coat matches your pants. I love you always. You are my beloved. You're the one I am well pleased in. And this message this day is about rising in consciousness, so it is the experience of knowing that presence of God. So when I face those challenges and those questions and wonder, am I really worthy of this kind of talk? You've got to realize unworthiness is just a matter of mistaken identity in your life. Spirit is worthy in your spirit. That is what the Christ consciousness, that message is. This is what Horus, Dionysus, Addis, all those guys are about is being bigger than i am greater than the things of this world you've been fooled if you think you can really die that this body is who you are who you are is animating this physical experience and that love that brought you together in this world by all means is going to continue to bring you together because it is multi-dimensional it transcends time and space and it's not just coincidence you showed up here together you will continue to travel and journey together because consciousness is more than one location god is omnipresent which means everywhere and the true expression of spirit is infinity and when we come to know the god name Nature, what we'll come to recognize is our true nature. You got that? When you recognize the divine nature, which is in and through all things and is omnipresent, that is your true nature. That is what heals. Imagine the infinite potential that you hold in the palm of your consciousness. Yes! You enter this world with so much to share, to give, to express, to do, and to be. And as you get shot down a little bit, you begin to move into your cave. You get shot down or hit, experience the pain, you brought to your knees, you roll the tomb, the stone in front of that tomb. And I'm safe, but it's dark. That's what this whole message, or at least the sunrise service, was about this morning. It was pitch black when we started, but you know the sun is going to come because the sun is up there. It's behind the fog. You know that. That's, I don't even have to tell you that analogy. But the sun never goes away, and when you are inside the cave, the sun cannot penetrate those rocks. It keeps it out. You're the one who's got to get to the point and say, you know what, enough is enough. I am bigger than this. I'm going to roll away the stone. I'm going to rise in consciousness and embrace this Easter message that says we are all expressions. We're all children of the beloved. And I am going to walk this world with my dharma, with my passion, with my purpose. I'm going to go for that for which I've been charged to come into this world to do. And there is no one or no thing that can deny it because I am bigger than the things in this world. You know, that which is in this world cannot stand to that which is from that kingdom within. That which is within you is greater than that is what's in this world. And this wonderful Christ message is teaching us and telling us that that divine presence is yours to use and to express. But you're the one who's got to be willing to have that kind of divine relationship and know that it is not fickle and uh, codependent and it is not uh, responsive to you uh, having to be a certain kind of way in this relationship. It, it is is uh, 
uh, not uh, going to deny you. What is essential is that you begin to stop denying yourself and to open up to the wonderful flow, the presence of God that is seeking to express itself and allow that divine nature to come through you. And the way you do this, here is your how-to for the day, is that you begin to stretch your ear and listen. You, you begin to listen to what is just beyond your ability to hear. Are you able to just like, you know when you're trying to stretch a little bit and hear a little bit beyond where you are? No. Well, I know it's possible. My mom used to do it all the time. She heard me get into all sorts of things that there was no human way in which she could know I was doing. So I know that as you begin to stretch that inner ear, you begin to hear the divine download. You begin to catch it in terms of visions or, or inklings or hunches. You, you know, you don't, whatever it is, you've got to be courageous enough to develop that inner hearing, that inner seeing. And, I, and if it is, I don't know, counting mal mala beads or, uh, you know, going on hikes and finding feathers, whatever it is, you need to develop that inner ear so you can be that place where that infinite potential is expressing itself because you have what it takes. You have what this world hungers for at this time. It's no mistake that you've been born upon this planet at this time. The headlines on this planet can be scary, but you're bigger than that. It takes all of us being bigger than that. This Christ message, this message of the solar messiahs is not just for 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. It is for today. It is your message that has continued to have been told through the beginning, from the beginning of written history. Are you embracing it? Are you seeing how it is personal to you? It doesn't do much good sitting in the history books. It's a matter of taking a look and seeing how is this relevant in my life, in my world. You know, Jesus, he had the pain. You know, to watch his people turn on him. His disciples turn on him. Pain happens to be part of this earthly process. I'm a great believer. It doesn't have to be, but I haven't really seen that case. You know, what, what I know is that all initiations into higher states of consciousness look like having to cross that river then move beyond death. You read the stories about the initiates who are willing to have the courage to face climbing that mountain and that dragon, that beast. There's something inside of them that is greater than what is in this world, and they don't quite know what's on the other side of that river or the other side of the threshold. But you know what? I am one with God. God and I are a majority, so I'm willing to trust and live in my faith rather than my fear. I'm going to stretch in ways that the world may think is strange, but you know what? I have been called for a time such as this to bring the peace and the greater understanding and the new thought and to shed my old skin. My skin that has the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity because I am the Christ expressing and I know that I am worthy to be that conduit through which the Christ expresses here because I have rolled away the stone from the tomb and I am allowing myself to be that place where God is making itself known in those places of pain and question and disturbance. And I'm willing to go there. A lot of times this new thought philosophy is all good. It's all good. It's all nice. It's all sweet. You know what? In this world... Sometimes it just isn't. And it doesn't mean it's time to retreat from that. It's actually the time to invite it in to your heart, to your soul and spirit. God, help me to see. I'm stretching my ear. I'm opening my eyes. Let me know. If my mom could do it in this world. I can do it too. Yeah. And um, Mother Teresa, I mean, he, he, saint, literally saint, um, you know, she worked with the poorest of poor in Calcutta. She would work with the dying poor on the streets who had nowhere else to live. And she would look at them and say, look at me and know that you are loved, which is sometimes the last thing they got to know before they checked out of this world. And she said when she looked at um, the, the, those individuals, what she saw was God in distressed disguise. She saw God in a distressed disguise. She looked there and saw God. She saw the divine presence showing up. I remember when the Tibetan monks talked here at Seaside. Um, there, there was this one, I was in prison, the Chinese prison, 18 years, I think, a story. And the stories he told are just staggering of hanging upside down, being shocked, and teeth. It's just, it was horrendous. And what he shared that stuck with me all these years later, because he shared it when we were over on uh, First Street on PCH, he, he said that my guards, my prison guards, and my torturers have been my best teacher. Whew. That's heavy. 
Dalai Lama, we know his story. You know, exiled, the communist Chinese have taken over and destroyed his country, genocide, that whole bit. And he talks about them as my friends, the enemy. You know, he couches, he's willing to enter in and not sugarcoat it because when we have this pain in our heart and our soul, so often, you know, we just want to stick it in. I'm going to stick it down there. But what happens when we put it in here, it comes up over here. Yeah. You know, we just try to put it in the back of our mind and it comes out in our body, ulcers, cancer, who knows what it looks like. So we try the other approach. Ah, just blabbering, let it flow, agitation, you know, anxiety, put it out all over and just it's tiresome, it bugs people, it doesn't work either. But there's a third approach. And that is an awakened, compassionate heart that is willing to sit with the pain and the difficulty and allow spirit to present itself. And it often looked like a sense of forgiveness. You know, freedom comes when our willingness to enter into the painful situations. If I'm only going to go where it's happy and filled with joy and everything's nice and all, yeah. Um, you know, freedom comes when I'm willing to go into the dark places, when I'm willing to go into the tomb, when I'm willing to go into the pain and just be present with a compassionate, awakened heart, listening, observing, and noticing with an ear that is beyond the condition of this world because we are greater than this. The April Fool's is we are not this. It is not death. So if I'm able to lean into that and have a faith that takes me into an area, a trust that takes me into a spot that I haven't gone here before, then all of a sudden things begin to happen. I mean, Jesus did. It. You know, that story is on the cross. Said, Forgive them. Forgive those guys. They don't know what they have done. You know, he didn't want to go through it. Hey, if you can take this cup from me, please do. <laughs> Help yourself. Find somebody else. Yeah. But you know what? As we are willing to forgive, as we are willing to surrender, we begin to come to an awakening, a movement that is beyond the logicalness of because forgiveness just doesn't make sense to the logical mind. Somebody did you wrong, it's like it's sitting in you. But forgiveness is a mystical alchemy of the soul. Like changing, you know, lead to gold, or rumple still skin, the maiden and the locked in the, you know, the chamber, spinning straw into gold. That's what happens. That's the rising in consciousness above the world of form. I mean, it's tough. I get it, you know. But Jesus said, hey, I, I didn't do it. I can't do it. Of myself, I can do nothing. You know, remember that story? Of myself, I can do nothing. It's that spirit within. It is that presence within that does the work. That's the alchemy. That's the mystical transition. That is a surrendering and rising in consciousness with that awakened, compassionate heart that you're willing to be there. I shared at the last service um, a story of this uh, senior nurse practitioner who would work in, um, that was that, okay, who had worked in, um, in the birthing rooms in, in, in uh, the hospitals. And when there was, um, she would share that, you know, most, all births are painful and they're hard and they're difficult. And as soon as the parent holds the baby in the hand, it, everything just seems, for the most part, to get better. Everything is okay, but there's few occasions where the birth didn't go well and the baby didn't make it. And then that's when all the other nurses call her in. And she came to realize that her gift in this world was being able to be there in those midst of pain. And she discovered it when, um, when eight years old, she shared the story that her, when she was eight, her mom left for the day and had her take care of her younger sister and the three-month-old baby brother. And while um, mom was gone all day and the baby was napping, it never woke up from the nap. It was a crib death that, was go that went on. And um, she was devastated. And mom never told her that it wasn't her fault. She never told her it was her fault. But what she did tell her is that she is a big girl and big girls don't cry. And so she lived with that pain and that difficulty, never quite... Uh, expressing it until she was in uh, the school for becoming a nurse and all this pain started coming up as she was working in the hospice care as she's working in the cancer ward as there were patients that were dying and she couldn't handle this pain anymore so she went to a meditation retreat and within the first days, she was just sitting there in the silence and just started crying and crying. And, and she would recognize, and she'd have the images of her three-month-old brother, and she would have images of her mom, and she would have this sense that she had never been forgiven by her mom or she had never forgiven herself or, or any of those things. And as she continued to sit there in that, not run from it, not stuff it, not try, 
but to be with it with that awakened compassion and heart listening just beyond the edges, she began to um, experience a shift, a rise in consciousness. The Easter message of rising changed everything for her that all of a sudden grace entered in. All of a sudden understanding and compassion filled her and she felt for the first time forgiveness for her mother as well as for herself and that she was able to sit there and weep and forgive and not need to change anything but to just be present in the pain and have that be what it is. And so in the hospitals now, when there is a challenge, the doctors and nurses call her to sit with some parents who hold a damaged fetus, trying to make difficult decisions. And she just sits with them and cries with them and doesn't try to make it better. She doesn't try to control the situation, the circumstance. She is free enough to sit in that wild, uncontrolled, emotional flow, knowing it is part of the mystical alchemy of the transition of the soul through a very rough time that has brought you to your knees. You know, in our forgiveness process, sometimes we need to address issues, speak out, march, seek justice, but always part of the ultimate forgiveness process is that compassionate heart that finally opens up and releases us from its bondage and from the difficulty that is there. It comes down to, you know, are you going to allow that which is within you to be greater than that which is in this world? For you've been called for a time such as this. You have got a message of purpose and something to do. And as you realize what that is, you begin to wake in your day by stepping into your dream. Imagine if your vision, your, 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 your dream was so clear that when you woke up, you stepped into that and that you were the one who got to decide what it is you were going to do in your world. And it's going to take some work to make the transitions and the changes in your world in those significant areas because if it was easy, you would have done it right now. And when we're working on healing, it is about allowing that presence of God to show up in our life and to show us, not tell spirit, heal this situation, make this better, but rather God, let me see and hear as you. That is the rising in the Christ because there is something that is far greater. It is about that elegant um, connection with that mysterious power of your being. It is about that relationship that allows the emergence of the great yet to be that is not being sidetracked by this world or uh, a, a binge on Netflix or uh, what's going on in The Bachelor. It is fully there for you. It is there for you 24-7. It remembers your birthday. It remembers you every day of your life. And you are the one who's got to partner with that and be willing to do the work that you are being called to do. You know, it, I'd love to say it was easy to get to this spot with Seaside where we've got a, a full house and a lot of love and the family has come together. I haven't seen it like this since Christmas. I love you guys. Merry <laughs> Christmas if I don't see you before. Yeah. But, you know, and, and, you know, we have got nearly 30 years to get to this place. Your dream and your, your vision is not going to be delivered to you on this gold platter that uh, the maiden from Rumpelstiltskin uh, turned to gold for you. You know, you've got to work it. You've got to take these spiritual principles and use it to push the stone away so that light can come in. To know that you're bigger than anything that is in this world and the message of those solar messiahs is your message of truth. And you are the one who is, is here to recognize that presence in all situations in your life. And it is not about controlling the situation. It is about calling forth the presence of God in that person that you're looking at, calling forth your awareness, the presence of God in the situation, and recognizing the fullness and the omnipresence of the God that is within my heart is the same one that is fully present with inside your being. And I don't need to send anything because when I know the love and when I know the presence within me, it is known within you. And that is the value of you reaching your dream and your goal and your visions in your life. That is the benefit that you bring. It's just not right for you not to, to quit on yourself. We need you. You know, and, and we know this. Truth, this is what Ernest Holmes says, truth is truth. No matter what. But its only benefit to you is in proportion to which you realize it. Truth is truth no matter what, but its only benefit to you is in proportion proportion to your realization of it. Are you realizing the truth? 
You know that you're the beloved child in which spirit is well pleased. You know that your true nature is divine. If it's not moving in your world with that kind of ease and grace, then there's something out of alignment, and you've got to be the one who's willing to look at it and get it back into place because this world needs your joy, your success, your fulfillment, your love, your presence, your light, your glory. And if something is not working from the past in your world, what you get to do is do something new now. What is it I can do now? What is it I need to know now? What is it I need to be now? You're the only one who can do that and to be that in your life. And as you do, there is the emergence of the greater yet to be. It is the rising of that Christ consciousness as your consciousness, for there is only one that is the infinite in which all change takes place. That is what is going on right now, is that we are those individual points of the infinite in which we are all part of the whole. What are you bringing and contributing to this whole, this Christ consciousness? Your joy, your love, your vision, your possibilities? Are you just espousing and grumbling in the junk that is out there? The Easter season reminds you, you got to get out of the darkness. you got to get out of the pig pen mentality. you got to get out of where it's not working for you and to step into that light, to step into the new day, to step into that Christ expression and realize that you are the one, that you are bigger than anything that is going on in this world because there is no large or small in the mind of God. And so if you have a challenge, um, Rumi said, whatever turns you back to spirit, be grateful for it. Whatever turns you back to spirit, whatever it is, be grateful for it. But worry about the delicious comforts that keep you from prayer. You know, we don't want to go into the pain. We just want to go where it's all working and say, this is it. I got to tell you what, our life is about going into the darkness, the challenge, and the pain, and being that Christ expression that presents the opportunity for healing to happen, for life to transform, for understanding to emerge, for peace to be right in the midst of the challenges and wars and difficulties and discomforts. There is that presence of God that is waiting to be acknowledged, and that is what you get to do as an expression of that Christ consciousness. God bless you on this Easter morning. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring the Seaside Choir back to our stage with the wonderful Rebecca Jade.
That is your Seaside Choir under the direction of Sasha and Rebecca. Nice job, man. Thank you, thank you. All right. Well, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in our givingness and the sharing of our love in support of uh, Spirit showing up in our world. And the more you continue to remember Spirit first in your life, what happens is Spirit shows up first as your life. And so as you support God's work, what happens is God uh, supports your work because you are that divine expression of Spirit with the infinite potential and possibilities. And so this is the moment in which you get to be the activity of God. You get to give without the strings, without any attachment, and just know that you're supporting this message that has continued to come here out of Seaside for the last 30 years and continues to be here whether you show up once a year or every Sunday. It is an important moment, and know that as you give, your heart expands, the love flows, and you just open up to realize that your source is beyond person, place, stock market, or employer. It is that which is infinite that shows up in your world way in which you are able to open up to because you're dealing with that which is infinite it's everywhere so with that i want to invite our ushers to come forward at this time as we do take our gifts from our heart and our soul and i want to say thank you to um this um wonderful ushering team and crew and greeters that met us coming pat man you are a living testimony to healing you have been down for so long more than a year and here you are welcome home Woo! How nice, how nice. So, hey, thank you to those who mail in your contribution. When you can't be here, it is greatly appreciated, as well as those that remember us in the auto tithe, that regular systematic support from your world into Seaside. That regularity is imperative, important for us to be able to move with a balance through our different cycles in the summer, winter, uh, monthly bills, and all those things. So, uh, I'm great. And you guys at home, we know that you're there. I trust you enjoyed this rockin' Easter service. We love you. We love the message you, you share, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're watching our live streaming on our internet. Appreciate your letters, your cards, your contributions. Uh, in Michigan, I, I know you're watching from there. And Florida, I know you're watching. And New York, uh, and Idaho. I mean, I could keep going on. There, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of individuals. If you go on Facebook right now, you can see everybody who's, who's chatting with Cat and what's going on there. But what's going on right now is I'm standing here with gratitude and appreciation for that wonderful abundant flow that is coming through our hearts. And what is coming through our hearts is coming from that divine inexhaustible place for we are that conduit through that infinite reservoir through which that good pours, that truly we are that channel through which that blessings of spirit manifest in our life. And we take the manifestations of the divine and we send it forth into this world to form the vibration in which we, we move and know that this blessing that touched our life continues to be a blessing that touches all lives as it moves forth bringing that good and greater joy to everyone it it blesses so i say thank you father mother god for the realization that my source is infinite it is not an individual but truly in this realization and gratitude that i find a sense of peace and well-being and i rest with the security knowing that it is forever and so it is amen and together let's say this affirmation of abundance which is Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. Thank you. 
those are your guys from Seaside, the expanded Easter version. Yeah, where else are you going to find music like that on an Easter morning? But Seaside is the place to be. All right. Well, hey. Hey, Tasha, man, what an abundant expression of spirit you bring us. And I stand before this bounty and I can feel the outpouring of love. I can feel the outpouring, the caring, and the compassion, that expanded heart that truly has stepped into the rising consciousness and that new state of being, that new vibration that has been cast through this action and this givingness, for truly this is a blessed moment in which all of us have had a true opportunity to take a look at the consciousness of our abundant expression. And so with joy we have given, with joy that we uh, are a part of that flow and it is received at seaside and it's handled in good stewardship and it's put forth back into that flow, bringing the joy joy and love and happiness to everyone that comes in contact. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for this opportunity to be an expression in the activity of God's abundant flow. And so it is. Amen. All right. This is Tasha Manzano. She is one of your board members here at Seaside. Happy Easter. I remember when your little ones used to be doing egg hunts and now they're uh, all grown. Yeah, I love that. That's fun. There's proud mom standing in the back. You guys have been part of Seaside from the beginning, for sure. Oh, my goodness, uh, Reverends and Dr. Kathy and Dr. Christina and Reverend Lori, Matt. It was so fun to do Easter morning with the three of you and to bring forth that spirit in our unique Seaside ways. You guys are a blessing, all of you. Speaking of blessings, Rebecca, you're just fabulous and wonderful. Thank you for being here so early before sunrise. Choir, wonderful. Thank you. I love you. Long day for you. And Sasha, bless you for stepping in the last moment and creating magic. Guys in the sound booth, uh, Steve and Ed, we got it right. Good job. Marv, all right. Good job with the video. And the wonderful Crawford crew on all the three cameras sharing this with the world. We know that you're there. You are a blessing and a gift to us all. Speaking of gifts, the flowers today are from Nancy and Bill. Mills, I don't see them here, but thank you. Big shout out for the beauty that you bring us. And really, the only announcement I have today is this is the last day. If you've been thinking of getting a paver for the garden, putting your message in stone for the world to see, for generations to come, today's it because we are taking everybody's message and sending it off to the engravers that are literally going to carve your legacy. You get to choose the legacy you want to live. So today is the last day. Sign up uh, with Kat. She won't look so shocked after you do. And uh, uh, we, will, we will meet our goal, but today's the last day. So please, please, if you've been thinking about getting a paver and writing your message in stone so it can be out there for decades, um, th this is the day. So please do that. But other than that, anybody, you guys, anybody want to talk to me? How's, uh, anybody want to say anything? You, come on up here. I, I can't get there. There's so many of you. I love this. <laughs> Where have you been every Sunday? You go. Um, we what? were all coloring Easter bunnies, and we were dance, and we were doing, and we were clapping and jumping. Wow! So were we. <laughs> oh, nice. So you're gonna get some uh, goodies soon. Yeah. You really want me to stop talking so you can get them? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Anybody else want to, want to share? Yeah, come on up here. Oh, you want to say something? My family loves us, and when we were, when I was two, I like, I really, I really, really loved when I have something in my hand and I went shopping, but I really, really wanted to go down. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am glad about that. That's fabulous. Hey, Kane, what's happening? We were about to go on the East Day Cut. And they sidetracked you in here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you what. As soon as I'm done praying, then um, we're going to sing like a close. Well, we'll sing I Release and Let Go. But under the last song, the Grace song, I'll invite all the parents to come get your children, join Victoria, and go out that side door during our last song of grace. And any children that are here can join them in the egg hunt because we're going up on the hill. It's going to be great. I know you have a lot more eggs than ever before. So what I'm going to start doing is praying so we can get moving on this for our kids. So I invite you to feel that presence, that power, that love, that magic that is within this room. 
Allow yourself to be tapped by that elegant connection with the infinite. That's something that is emerging in this moment that is beyond words. Feel that something that is bigger than your brain functioning in this moment. Don't be so smart that you make yourself dumb. Just allow yourself to be immersed in this wonderful frequency of love and renewal, this divine download of the greater yet to be, knowing that you are far bigger than anything that is in this world. So recognize that life force, that same expression, that Christ consciousness, that something that we said was in Christ Jesus, that same something is what you are. It's moving in this moment through each and every one. For truly the blessings of spirit is upon this time and this space is this holy ground upon which we stand. And there is the emergence of the greater yet to be. That's something that is bigger than any challenge which you may be facing. Allow your heart to just resonate with that life force. Knowing that it is in the realization of this life force that transformation takes place. And you can see and you can feel and you know all is well. For you have been touched by the presence of God and lifted and have risen to a greater consciousness, a greater understanding, able to hear the truth of being a little clearer in this moment. For that presence is alive. And as you allow it to be you in this moment, that divine nature becomes your nature. For there is only one with infinite potential. So in this moment, see that vision and that presence moving as your dream fulfilled. Feel the wholeness in your world, in your body, in your world of form. Live with a sense of ease and grace as that wonderful flow of life fills your expression. And healing happens. It happens in the, all areas. In the body, it becomes natural. It moves into a place of balance, perfect weight, perfect rhythm. The heart moves succinctly. The body heal itself. Every cell, every tissue, every organ just awakens to its innate blueprint of wholeness. And that intelligence that guides the universe is the same wisdom that is moving through your physical being right now. Feel it and sense it and feel that rush, that upliftment of life itself having its way, breaking forth from the egg and the shell and the tomb, allowing yourself to courageously step into life and to share that for which you have come to give to this world, to be able to awaken in your dream with the courage and confidence and conviction and knowing that you have what it takes to allow it to unfold in your life and the ability to live with fulfillment and success is the natural outcome of living in that affluent flow of the divine, bringing the richness, the goodness, the monetary support and all that is necessary to fulfill that for which you have caught a glimpse of that you have heard just beyond the fringe of what is humanly possible for you are bigger than the human mind. And as you say yes to be used by spirit, your relationships just get juicy and passionate and real and honest and true and integrous. For the presence of God moves between you and the other human beings in relationship and work and friendship and intimacy. For the presence of God is omnipresent, is everywhere. There is no place that the spirit isn't. So I let go of my struggle of attempting to make anything happen. And I just stand and allow that which is God to emerge and to see as spirit sees. And recognizing whatever is separated, that dissolves into nothingness. And that space becomes no longer an issue. For there is only one. And I am one with that which is, which is God expressing right now for each and every one of us. For Seaside continues to be that divine expression of light that is growing, that is thriving, that is prospering, where prayer requests are answered. So knowing in this divine frequency of answered expression, I'm able to say thank you. Not thank you to anyone or anything outside myself. There's nothing out there. I just live with a state of gratitude and grace and appreciation for life itself, ever emerging and expanding in new ways as my life. And so I let go in this moment. I trust and I believe with an unshakable conviction, with a deep faith, knowing that all is well. And so I let go to this moment and allow spirit just to have its way as my way. And so it is. Amen. <laughs> There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand But now I can say you are discouraged 
struggling just to make it through another day. You've got to let it go. And this is what you have to say. Come on, Seaside. situations together I am rising to greater awareness in all situations touch your heart and say it again I am rising to greater awareness in all situations one more time now that you got it down I am rising to greater awareness in all situations and our song of grace guys you can head on out Are living. 